the art teacher told me, listen, if you don't take art, she's like, you'll ruin your life. That point came when I had to make a decision whether I'm going to stay in Melbourne or not. And I moved here to India. But I told my parents I'm moving back. This is the part where they were a bit horrified though. You run the show, run all the logistics. I'm doing nothing. And I'm, like, I'm telling them, I'm like, I'm not going to touch the logistics part. I'm going to give you the file. I'll do all the production till sampling. And uh, then it's just numbers up to you. The minute it becomes work, uh, or a job, there is the part where you have to post every day, which it, it, no one understands that that is literally your marketing, even though, of course, I love it now. It's become part of my existence. Uh, but I cannot miss. Even if I want to miss, I cannot miss. This is Origin Stories, a show about Indian brands, businesses, founders, and how they got here. Alicia Souza is a powerhouse with over 4 lakh followers tracking her creative journey. Leading two thriving ventures, her freelance gig boasts big name clients like Google, Adobe, Dove and Gillette. Additionally, she charms her followers with AliciaSouza.com, a hub of elegant calendars, funky fashion and more. Journey with us as we explore Alicia's leap from Australian design school to her early roles as a barista and a bank teller, unveiling her first big break and her bold move to Bangalore, all under the radar from her parents. It's a tale of passion meeting perseverance right here in this exciting episode. There is an art teacher of the schoolish, so designated students who do your bulletin board. For Christmas, we had to do our windows. I was that one of the designated girls. So I think that interest, that excess amount of, excess amount of interest, like even when the school magazine came out, I was really keen to do the cover. Okay. So I did the cover. And my the art teacher told me, listen, if you don't take art, I, it, this, these literally were her words. She's like, you'll ruin your life. You will, you'll be wasting your life. It's going to be, you really hate everything else. Da, da, da. And that was really daunting. So that's when I actually really considered. And my parents, my dad specifically, was very keen on us doing something that we love doing. Why is uh, that? He hated his job. <laughs> he, and so this is a 10 plus 2 uh, school. So you finished your 12th yeah, in 12th, the regular. I, yeah. Then where did you go next after that? Melbourne. I came sure. to Melbourne to study uh, communication design. Why uh, Australia? Where did you look at any other Only options? Only thing, the cheapest one abroad was Australia. I mean, I hate to say it. And money was a constraint. There were a lot of reasons, but it was the it, money was the biggest reason. And how was that experience of college? Uh, what, did you learn what you started, what you wanted to learn? Uh, I felt like my Australia experience was very good. The college experience was not so much, and not like they did anything. I also definitely, because I was such an introvert, I could have done a lot of things that like now I would have ex changed this whole experience differently because firstly, I would mention if something is not working for me and if they are doing something differently. But as an older, wiser <laughs> lady, I can do that. But that time I was like a child. And, and What was not working for you there? Firstly, uh, we were a lot of, uh, there were a lot of international students suddenly. So it was uh, almost like a separation between the two. Uh, there was no idea of what an international student comes and what is available to them. So as soon as you go to uni, I can't even recall if they said there were certain things you need to get because none of us had computers. And they expected a lot of things like you have to have not only, one of us had a camera phone. It was just nuts. And and there was the first first project itself needed people to have cameras. And we're like, we have nothing. What are we going to do? That's crazy. You were paying uh, yourself for your... No, my parents, we got help from someone to take the loan out. And uh, did you, did you like stop yourself from spending because of all these unexpected expenses or did you Oh my God, I was never a spender anyway. But okay. yes, that time I was her hermit and miserly. Yes, both. <laughs> how, how did you manage the paying in Australian dollars and oh, not having an income? I was, uh, I never, there were no treats, no treats for me at all. Like there was no going out. And uh, uh, right after uh, your uni, you, did you take up an art slash related uh, role or did you take up something different? Uh, no, so this is really weird. In my last year of uni, uh, I've only illustrated. Through my whole uni, I've owned all my projects, barring one, was illustrated. And I think that barring one was, I, you could not illustrate for it. Um, so what do you mean by was illustrated? What like, are the other projects? So, so the projects, are, it's graphic design. So technically how you can... Um, do a, so just imagine it's a packaging project. Your packaging doesn't really need to have illustrations on it. It can be typography, so that's words, or it can be photographs. All of mine had illustrations, so my whole portfolio, and that time it was physical. And when you say illustration, it's a doodle all cartoon. Drawings. Yes, okay. drawings, drawings. And uh, yeah, it's always cartoon style, like uh, it's a more whimsical style. That time it was very different to what it is now, so you won't even be able to recognize it as mine. 
but everything was illustrated. And uh, I had put my uh, folio and I had gone to Abu Dhabi for my, I didn't go for graduation. Folio support folio. You have to, yeah, folio day. It's this okay. day you put a folio out. Okay. Some people come and see it. I was not there for this. It's like a physical Physical, exhibition? that time it was physical. Okay. Yeah, physical books. Okay, so then portfolio day came. I went to Abu Dhabi, someone from the newspaper came by, saw my portfolio, they really want me to do a contract project. That means like a freelance job. And I said, oh my God, that is like the best news ever. I did that job for the, uh, it was called The Age, the newspaper. It was amazing. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Um, so this came in a newspaper? It like came your... in a physical newspaper. I, mean, I bought the newspaper. What was the job? Like? It was it was, uh, it was a puzzle. And I did um, uh, find the differences. Oh. I can't remember if they wanted that or whether they just said do a puzzle. Uh, but they were really nice. It was this one lady. It was, they were so nice. And I was so shy that I never sent my invoice. Wow. I'm like, how do I send an invoice for this? After you delivered the project. Of course, I did not. <laughs> Anyway, horrible. This is, and so, of course, to pay my bills. Then I was always working in a coffee shop throughout uni. And uh, so, as a barista? As a barista. And then I got a job at a bank because now I needed full time because I had more time and I wanted to do, but I also wanted to contract work as an illustrator. So, I, uh, that's when I started looking for illustration jobs. I started applying. All the illustration jobs were tagged with graphic design. So, you have to do graphic design, but you might get to draw. I was 100% sure I didn't want to do that. I wanted to only draw, which is asking for a lot, to be honest, because now I'm like, that's just not going to work out. In a foreign but I country realized with that. no network. With no network and no portfolio for it besides uni work. It's impossible, which is which I did realize because I went to a thousand people. And uh, that was the time I started going and talking. Like, you, I had to, right? Just do. So I did this thing where I went for interviews for jobs that I wasn't sure I really even wanted just because I was so nervous to go for interviews. But I will tell you one thing. There was one company I was perfect for the job in every single way. But they ended up getting uh, someone where they just knew internally. And I felt betrayed. I don't know why, because I'm like, that was like the ultimate job. It was for a card company. That's so ideal. I love greeting cards. And it was really far, but I'm like, I'll do the commute. I'll do whatever it takes, whatever. Uh, then it was a bridging visa, if I'm not mistaken. Um, what visa? Bri bridging. So between, um, after student, you get a bridging visa till you pick what you want to take a PR. I mean, I don't think um, design doesn't give you a PR. You won't have enough points. But anyway. Um, and oh, you're in debt. Yeah. I mean, I, I had to work anyway. That, that was given. That is never, that was never. Uh, was this be. like, oh, you need 10 years to pay this off? Was this like. You so my parents took the thing. We couldn't take. I mean, I was in Abu Dhabi. There's no, we cannot take a loan okay. and stuff like that. So my parents uh, took the loan. But you felt a need to pay them back? I felt a need to. I, my parents never took the money for my, which is, again, a ton. Um, but more than that, I had to make it work because they took this debt for me, you know? And I know what they took to pay off this and how long they would have taken to pay this off. So anyway, I was searching for a lot of jobs. Um, and by then, I had also taken a job at the bank. Super close by, everything's close by. Working at the bank as, oh, uh, t oh that then they called it? So service exec, some of this thing, it's basically a teller, but you're also selling things, which is again, where I built up. Then I think I just got chatty by them <laughs> because it, you're literally chatting the whole time. Which strangers? Uh, which strangers and to get about the, money. the most awkward thing, which is money. Why? Because the computer was so slow. So you're supposed to do sales during that time. Worst. But anyway, uh, that's how I felt. That's really the end result of how I got fine with making small talk. Um, but the good part was, when I worked in the bank in, in Melbourne, it was not uh, every single day. So I had days off where I could uh, do my drawing, which is so fulfilling. So it was this perfect fulfillment of doing my drawing, still being able to pay my bills. I lived a very low-key lifestyle. I really didn't have like heavy expenses or anything. And what happened next? When I was in Melbourne, started working on a company called Chumbuk, which everyone knows. Many people know, not everyone. So how, how did you come across Chumbuk while in Melbourne? We got chatting on email. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's a very long story, but in short, we started getting a uh, thing. By then, I really wanted to start a, a stationary brand also, because I really loved it. And in Melbourne, you see it all the time. It's amazing. Um, I started drawing stuff. It was almost like starting a story again. But anyway, we started talking. I started working with this couple, and we started uh, talking about Chumbuk. This was towards the end of my bridging visa thing. So my plan, the bank was offering me a thing to stay on, for a visa to stay on, 
but that means extension. you have to give, if I'm not mistaken, a five-year guarantee that you're staying on in in the bank, not not in the country, in the bank. Which sounds good, honestly. It's a great, it's a fine deal. But I started working on these drawings, and it was good. And I came to a, a, a Bangalore in the middle. Oh my God, so many mini notes I should make here about these decisions. But anyway, the products came in hand. So I remember drawing the products out. Uh, the products came in hand. So convinced. I'm like, this looks great. I'm. I love it. It's like I still love drawing for it. That point came when I had to make a decision whether I'm going to stay in Melbourne or not. And I moved here to India. But I told my parents I'm moving back. They were, this is the part where they were a bit horrified though. Because after all that, moving to India is not, not, doesn't sound very viable as a career. People move to the West from yeah, India. People yeah. don't move back. I, yeah, and, and I did not tell them the date I was leaving. It's quite sad now. But I don't, I was... Did you think they were trying to convince you out of it? I, I just knew, I was so sure about doing, of coming back, of coming here, not back, because this is the first time I'm coming. But I don't know how I had the ball, because I was so risk averse. I don't know what, like now, I'd be like, why? I don't know, I, I genuinely feel like some things I did in life were just, I, I don't know what, what happened that made me so strong on that decision. I don't think I'm as strong about certain decisions now. And did you tell them, I'm going back to India? And then next call they get is, hey, I'm in India? Something like that. I don't know how they found out the date. And I completely understand. It, all their feelings are 100% justified. And what was that product that you created that you got in your hand for the first time? It that... was not only the product. So we started with magnets. These are souvenirs at that time. That time, yes. It was just souvenirs. That time we didn't even have a name. It was just like, I think we got a sample. We got a picture of a sample. I can't remember. But it was just... Just the fluency of how the drawings came, it was just too easy. It felt right. Just felt right. I just felt like something, oh, but one of the things I remember very clearly was a um, question I asked myself was also, what what would I be able to come back to? I will, all the people who come back to Melbourne, I really wouldn't be, but, <laughs> but I'll never be able to get an opportunity like this again. The chances are much lower. Maybe that was rational. You come to India, you start working uh, with uh, the Chumbak team, yep. what's that experience like? The team was just me and them. That's it. Three okay. of us and and a sister, which was doing the logistics. It was good. It was um, it was new. It was so fast. I was on my desk the whole day. When I say at my desk the whole day, it was the same. Hermity. I did not know anyone in in there. I knew my brother. I knew one friend. I knew a few friends. No, everyone almost left by that. I, like I barely like handful. Like when I say five kind of people, it was just nuts. It was this just twenty ten. Twenty ten is when I moved back. Okay. Yeah. And what happened uh, as you were doing so your work? So it was literally one year of manufacturing, drawing, manufacturing, drawing. Anything I do worked itself into a product. Everything. I mean, that's kind of like now almost. But that time there was social media just started, and the feedback was really like amazing. I'm going to fast forward because this is like a lot of detail otherwise. But then we split ways a year and a half later. I think I was like, what did I just do? It was a year and a half. I was distraught. Like, I didn't know what to do. It was like what I came with. And I'm, again, logical enough to always have plan B-ish. Uh, I remember I used to Google illustrators in there and I used to find like two people or something like that. I didn't know what to do. I luckily got my first job uh, straight when I started freelancing, which was literally when I, uh, it basically was instant. One day of Chambak and one day of Vispit Ways, I have to freelance. It was like that. Yeah, I think you mentioned that it was a harsh ending for you. It was, it was just unexpected. But I didn't have a plan. That was the biggest problem. I'm such a planner person. Also, it was really hard telling my folks. That was the, what I think that say? was, oh man. Firstly, they felt sad because they knew also how I would have felt, which was, made me feel worse for them, not for me. I can handle it, but they, oh, that was really sad. Because like, I mean, your child, that's your child, of course. Did they say told you so? No, they would never. But they definitely mentioned the only time they ever asked. They're like, I think you should come back to Abu Dhabi. How do you start freelancing the next day? So, so I had a job, like I just got my first mail. Like it was what almost a hand of it is, I guess, in a way, where I got my first um, mail. I think a week before this happened, about asking to illustrate a book, that was my first project. It was so little money, but that's when I started Facebook. That was very awkward because even though I was outgoing in terms of making small talk, it was not outgoing enough to put my name on a drawing and say, look at my drawing, this is me. Like, it's, it's really embarrassing. I was still at the, I still with work at a stage where it's awkward sending invoices. Um, and so what? So you get this project, you illustrate this book. Illustrate this book. And that helps you survive a few more weeks in India. Y yes. And also by then, I started me going for meetings. Literally a handful of people I knew. I started 
uh, asking for, do you know someone who wants an illustration? This is 2012, 2013, so 2012, you can't DM people I, in Twitter, Instagram. I was not on Twitter. I, uh, no, there was no Instagram. Yeah. Instagram was not even uh, there. And and I started messaging, yeah, no, people in real. And that time it was, until I see your face, I don't know if I want to hire you for a project. So you had to go for physical meetings. And in, during the meeting, they might ask you, so how much would you charge? And then you'll be like, oh my God. But I think that also helped because then you realize it kind of like before where you go for these interviews just so you know how to answer these certain questions. So I went for a bunch of these. Very awkward. Of course, it's very awkward. That time it was small corporates that I went to. Like my friend's friend's wife, I remember this clearly because this is one project, wanted to write a book of her own. So I got to illustrate it. Again, like it's the budgets will be small. Do it anyway. Then her friend wanted something for a company. I'll do that. Is this happening because you're early in Bangalore, where all like the startup scene is taking off? This money pouring in. I think. I think. I don't think it's because of the money pouring in for sure. Uh, definitely because there are more companies in Bangalore. 100%. Because the stereotype I have is all the creative work in India happens in Bombay. It does. Uh, not all, but a chunk of it is in Bombay. I d did consider. I'm like, should I? But I'm like, oh, my life is already hard. Why would I move from a new city to a newer? City. I literally knew no one in Bombay. At least here I had my brother. Like if I broke my leg, there's someone to call. And also the dog. Also the dog. Uh, very importantly. Also I was seeing someone. <laughs> I should mention that. Just to be real about this. <laughs> uh, how did you so, get a series of projects? Okay, uh, so quickly. so, so uh, by then I started Facebook. With diligence comes consistency. So I used to post always every day online. I don't know that time if I posted every other day or whether it was every day. But it was very consistent. It goes also hand in hand with not having any life. I was it literally helps. again <laughs> very and it was it was not ready illustration like now I wouldn't post those illustrations up I feel like there has to be a sort of finish to them if I have to push push them up which is absolutely unnecessary I genuinely feel because it just builds habits um, and what are these illustrations are these targeted at those corporates no or are targets, these no targets just an illustration okay. that's all like it could be about things that I see which is most of my illustrations are very uh, at least then was way more or observing or silly things I think in my head. Actually, some were, a lot of them were like, oh man, that time was quite silly. Like cow jokes and really no, silly. I just love the old wife tale series. Oh my God. So that came a little later though, when I was a little more, I was in Facebook a lot more because a lot of that was, a lot of, if not all of it was crowdsourced. That time it was just like posting, 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 getting, getting, getting. Then I remember my first big client for me was AirAsia really nice they were genuinely like lovely i did a bunch of work for them that's when i felt like oh my god this is this is good this is and really they found good. you just from facebook facebook wow i remember one illustration went viral was that how to wear a lungi illustration and it was because i went for a, a meeting see this is where i mean like i had to go meeting i the meeting was in calicut in kerala i actually went like i just went for a meeting uh to another i remember i took a bus and that's what you did in the beginning because you just have to do the meeting if you needed to get a job. You saw a guy change his lungi while you were in yeah, the bus? Yeah, uh, no, but I, I think it was in the bus on the way back to the airport, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it was that, it was not wearing the lungi, it was shortening the lungi, which I've not seen. Uh, like that, you know, they put the leg up and then it comes short. I <laughs> love it. So that was the... I actually remember that illustration. Yeah, yeah, so that went, I remember it went so far and wide that my sister sent it to me and said, hey, this looks like yours. And I was like, that is mine. And because it came to her through WhatsApp. Anyway, so yeah, that's when people were like, can I have this on a mug? And I was like, no, I don't have an on store. And then it was just like a fail, lost opportunity. And then Sunday Soul Santi started. This is a flea market yeah. in Bangalore. Yes, sorry. Yes, it's a flea market in Bangalore. That time it was small. I did my first stall. Uh, definitely going to put in that my friend at the time. <laughs> help me with the products um, so these are magnets yes boxes. the ones which you can make very quickly uh, without much of an investment in smaller numbers so things which are uh, instant instant manufacturing like your uh, mugs did I, do, I didn't I didn't do t-shirts because that time t-shirts were not digital printing it was screen so we did mugs printed stuff so notebooks and uh, magnet was there um, luggage stuff. small small things did really well I was like okay so product is definitely this might what, work out. Yeah, I guess. So. And by now, were you... This is 2013, 2014? Yeah, approximately. Uh, by now, was your consulting assignments, your agency work, all of these freelance work enough to pay your bills? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Like I said, a year and a half uh, was when I feel like things just started really pouring. And like I said, I don't have... Like then, specifically now, of course, it's different. In Not in terms of, oh, I live a fancy life. It's just that now, of course, the num amount I have to 
uh, I have financial responsibilities for way more than then, which was just food on the table, food for my dog specifically, um, you know, uh, household expenses and stuff. Take us through the journey of uh, how you create an online store, uh, how you start, what products you choose to make, uh, okay. all of those okay. decisions. Okay, I've always been freelancing. So till now, I freelance. And in the beginning, it was just the, uh, the uh, flea markets. Then we started the online store. That time it was not Shopify. Like there was no Shopify, there was Magento, which was so frustrating. I remember very clearly uploading an image, going to make coffee, come back, and I may or may not, like sorry, it may or may not have uploaded. That's how long it took. This is a software so to manage a store. To front. manage the store. Yes, that's just how it was. Okay, my ultimate place, thinking place, is the shower. There's not much time, you can't have super long showers. Uh, you learn this in Melbourne because there's like a water crunch. So in that time, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And and I, I remember, oh my God, I've, one of the most things I'm grateful for is like uh, <laughs> piped water, uh, running water. And and I was like, okay, this would be a brilliant calendar because this, would, this year I can write all the things I'm grateful for. And I, And it was already, I think, September, so I'm like, if I make, it's oh, October, it was like really late in the year already. So I'd make a calendar. I would do 365 things of things that I'm grateful for, but I'm not going to have time to color. So I'll make it a color in calendar. And that time coloring books were not in rage at all. So I did this calendar. I made 365 things and I did it really well. And that was my What's whole... What's really well? Is it like 100 sales? By or... then I would have sold hundreds. I, 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 don't, I don't think we would have sold a thousand. I don't know. But I, I highly doubt. Um, then the next year came and I'm like, oh my God, I have to do a calendar again because you're like, I'm looking forward to next year's calendar. But that was how I started the calendar thing. Anyway, so I started uh, this, the, we started the whole the online store. Uh, I'm not handling the uh, part, but, but there is so much work to do where the mails come in, tracking, it's, it's a lot. And then you have to, it was done extremely badly, to lack of a better word. And then we split ways and I'm considering closing down the uh, online store because by then I moved out and there was products under my bed. I have to call the career guy every time something sells. I'm literally handling my freelance work, which is going really well. But uh, I was like, I'm like, okay, it's, it's, I'm not going to be able to handle it. And it was like, I think half a year or something. I'm like, this log logistics is not what I'm meant to do. And it's not worth my time because I know I can do my other stuff. Yeah, by then I met my partner, Saurabh, who's my partner till now. And Saurabh basically, how I met him was, he sent me a mail. And I, by then I'd stopped doing meetings in general. Uh, but he had sent me a mail with an attachment of a, a, what is that? A brochure that was so good. It was export quality type products, which I'd not seen over here. I met him, he had come, uh, come from, out of, from, from Tamil Nadu. And um, we got along really well. And after two meetings, I also went to Tamil Nadu. We both took buses. He came with bus, I came, went with bus also. And um, we got along really well. We, we at least saw the same vision. And he was like, okay, I'll run your online. And I, it was approaching uh, the, um, what do you call it? End um, of the, the end of the year. And that was the season. So I said, okay, this is what we'll do. You run the show, run all the logistics. I'm doing nothing. And I'm, like, I'm telling him, I'm like, I'm not going to touch the logistics part. I'm going to give you the file. I'll do all the production to sampling. And uh, then it's just numbers up to you. Um, investment's already there and stuff like that. So he's like, okay. And it did really well. We worked really well together because a lot of things is uh, me not going into his section of the logistics part and also sampling part where I'm like, uh, I'm not pushing it far enough where it's not going to come out in time. And he won't bug me to, you know, like, oh, I think, you know, you should add this here because it'll sell better, you know, that kind of stuff. So we were both respectful of our boundaries. So and he's got a uh, background in manufacturing. He does, okay. yes. He comes from, uh, he's seen manufacturing since he was a kid, actually. So um, he took me to the factory. It was the first time I ever saw a massive factory, like in and out, and it was amazing. And uh, what percentage of your business now is product and what percentage That's is? That's a good question. Um, I think I still take more freelance work. 70, 30? Uh, we are talking about income? Yeah, this is income. Uh, 70, 30. Uh, freelance is larger than uh, yeah, product. Yeah. Do they feed off each other? Do you get freelancing work because of your product? Uh, of your brand or I your think product? The other, so, so, okay, I think why both of them exist is because of my marketing with, with social media, if I have to put it very bluntly. But that's my biggest voice, right? Is, is so, so 
social media. I counted your Instagram followers. That's mm-hmm. 11 full Chinnaswamy stadiums. Oh wow. Okay, I did not think of it like that. It, that's very sweet. <laughs> And I've seen like some great companies, right? I've seen Google, General mm-hmm. Electric, Urban Ladder, Fresh Menu. Yeah, they are uh, darling. Which one of these are your favorite project that you did? I my okay, with my goldfish memory, I only remember the last things that I've done. So the last ones that I've done recently was for Amazon. We did hundred gift cards. The timeline was really tiny, so it was I was nutty and I had to finish hundred of them full color and it was bang in the middle of when I'm delivering my planners for production. So it was not those that I think those few months were not few months. Sorry, it was one month. I had to deliver everything. Yeah. Um, Google multiple, but the big one. Which I hopefully will see very soon is uh, in the Gurga office. I had done all the lifts again. The timeline was tiny; like it was such a small timeline to deliver these really big projects. So it was the panels inside the elevators, which I'm so excited to see. It's not even funny, but yeah, that was really exciting. And somewhere in this journey, you switched from Facebook to Instagram, right? And huh. I'm sure you like Facebook became like a very minor part of it, right? And how has that part of the uh, switch been for you? And now I feel there's another switch happening to video on Instagram, like reels, <laughs> right? How are you navigating that? Oh, that's a good question. Okay, so I've never been a heavy user of uh, Facebook or, or Instagram. Now I think definitely more. There are just a lot more recipes that I want to try, so I'm always it is a problem. Anyway, so uh, that time you could just post from Instagram to Facebook. And then I stopped using Facebook because I'm just posting from Instagram. But then I stopped using Facebook entirely and only Instagram. So it goes to Facebook, but I never open it. I'm only using my phone now to post on um, on Instagram, whatever, once a day in the morning. It's always been that since I started Facebook, once in the morning. And then a video, of course, came. So I, even though I'm like, oh, I have to do it, I, I never try to complain too much because that's how technology works. If uh, how I start, like that's how. I mean, I got on right with um, with something and you wrote one way. Yeah, I try not to complain, even though it's very daunting. Like video is extremely daunting for me because I actually don't watch a lot of videos, so I'm in the minority of people who kind of like static everything. So I, I can't are you, complain. Are you worried a little bit that you might miss worried. the next wave? Oh no, I don't worry about missing the next wave because uh, I'm very slow ball. Like I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be late for everything. For Adoption, anyway, but I get worried that I'm not doing enough. Like sometimes I'm like, am I posting enough videos? Uh, anything about your line of work or your art that I have not asked about? Oh, I'll definitely tell you about social media. It's okay, we talk about social media because I post on stories and I'm kind of an open book. A lot of people find it unbelievable that I would share all, like everything, but it's not really everything. Of course, a lot of people think it's it's really all roses, but of course, underneath there are also some thorns. So there have to be. You know, days where I'm really overworked, even if it's drawing for a living, which is amazing and it's the best job ever. But you have to make. There's so much pressure to get. Say, if you're running this company that makes products, and I think I was telling you earlier, every year I have to sell these planners, which we get the most amazing response from. It's it's just the most heartwarming things. But to make sure that every year we do, you know, the business side is you have to sell more. You have to sell it at a good price. That, so everyone loves it, and you're definitely not going to be overcharging. Um, yeah, but I feel I, 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 so when it comes to illustrate. Sorry, I'm, I'm rambling, but but when it comes to illust- uh, people who are starting off as illustrators, is to understand that it's not literally you do- at your desk all day doing this drawings because then that's a hobby. The minute it becomes work uh, or a job, there is the part where you have to post every day, which it, it, no one understands that that is literally your marketing. Even though of course I love it now, it's become part of my existence. Uh, but I cannot miss. Even if I want to miss, I cannot miss. And how do you choose what to uh, productize next? So you, calendars was the first mm. thing you did. Yeah. What do you do next? Oh, okay. Oh my God, I love products so much. Um, like I will draw for anything, but there are constraints, which is how <laughs> you, you judge. There's a constraint of money. So do you have enough money to put into, say, making a chair? Uh, that's a big investment. When you're making a chair, you'll have a, a number investment. So in terms of uh, MOQs, how, what's the minimum or number of chairs you can make? To sell, second, some products we launched launched before. Some product we launched actually till now, where we really don't make any money on it. Like we, which I don't think people understand. Like even if they say we get a lot of people saying, uh, "Oh my goodness, something is really expensive," but we're like, we are, we are literally not Amazon. We can't make in like the five hundred thousand number. That just is. We cannot do that. We cannot store those. And um, uh, do you see a, a clear split uh, in your uh, with your buyers and your followers? Is there like a 
are there young women uh, who typically follow you are there like uh, slightly older people with kids now that a lot of yeah. your work reflects yeah i i see uh, a lot of my followers are growing with me uh, so i think maybe someone super young would come for uh, maybe the drawings they <laughs> won't relate to me having a kid at this point because i wouldn't relate at that point um i i think about that all the time because i'm like within my drawing style what do i have to remove to make it man friendly so does that mean the hearts go out but are men okay with flowers or is the style completely womanized i i'm not sure so this is like a uh, what does the early theory say uh definitely removing the hearts apparently <laughs> um i don't want to put what is a man motif it's it's a challenge what do your parents uh, feel now about your india oh oh my god they are so <laughs> I'm I know they're proud uh, that things like I think their favorite is when we're out and people stop us and say hello and that's like I know I can like see the you know joy but of course that took a really long time So uh where does Alicia Souza go next Hopefully on vacation okay no <laughs> Um so now I feel like I'm at this point I mean really luckily uh where I feel like I can make opportunities happen so in terms of if I suddenly want to draw on this paint uh, on this spot i i believe i'd be able to find a manufacturer to so it's not a product game it's a what what makes sense to do what is exciting to do what is different to do like i'll give you an example like do i want to do more kids books it brings in literally nothing in terms of money but it is such a joy to do um do i want to invest in that how much do i want to invest do i want to, i do only one book a year do i want to do three books a year what does that mean in terms of time because books take the longest for me Um oh but I just want to start a separate business with just making pots I don't want but <laughs> but does that mean do I run it with the company do does someone else just make pots do I do a collab do I, all those things become questions super no that was really good thank you so much really 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 oh, appreciate this oh thank you so much this was I fun. had so much fun talking <laughs>